welcome to the second day of this symposium. And it's gratifying to see so many participants from both CIC member libraries and Ohio Link member libraries. But it's equally auspicious to see the executive directors of so many other consortia here. I think that's a really good um, the, uh, indicator that such interest bodes very well for future uh, collaborations and initiatives around um, uh, regional print management at a variety of scales. I'd like to thank the Ohio State University, a um, charter member of Ohio Link, the CIC, and OCLC for holding this in Ohio, which, as Constance mentioned, uh, Constance mentioned, it has such a rich history of regional print management and analysis. The panelists and attendees from Ohio Link can fill you in on the details of the uh, initiatives that we have, such as Scott Seaman and Arnold. But there are a few points I'd like to make today in response to some of the discussions yesterday. To Mark Sandler's expressed preference for Soviet-style central planning, <laughs> I'd, li I'd like to point out that the origin of Ohio Link was a top-down legislative mandate. Fortunately, it was a funded mandate. But in the mid-1980s, several research universities um, requested from the legislature millions of millions of dollars to build new libraries. And the Ohio General Assembly said, no, that's too expensive. Find some other way to do it. Um, so the Library Study Commission <clears throat> directed the Board of Regents, uh, su subsequently recommended the creation of a high-density remote storage system, the regional depositories, and also a central holdings catalog with requesting and uh, a delivery component. And as I like to say, at the dissemination of this mandate, at that particular moment, I doubt the library directors involved linked hands uh, spontaneously and sang kumbaya together. Um, so that, that um, but the original creators of Ohio Link and that in-reach requesting system, many of them are in this room. And I know that they are fervent believers that it was, uh, it was and still is a very good idea, thus proving that not everything a state legislature mandates um, out of ignorance is, uh, as a cost avoidance measure is necessarily a bad thing. <laughs> and to answer Carla's question of how to start these initiatives, I've been informed that the consumption of large amounts of rolling rock was extremely helpful in building those necessary trust relationships over time at the beginning. One of the perks of my job as executive director is how often I hear from end users, uh, especially former end users of Ohio Link, about how much they love Ohio Link. And there's a lot of you know, enthusiasm expressed in daily encounters like ordering a latte, going to the doctor's appointment, a doctor's appointment, or meeting with a potential landlord. It's outside of the usual academic environment. Um, it's worth noting that every legislative aide that I have met in state government knows what Ohio Link is, and that's from their the point of view of an end user of the print network. And I'm sure that other consortia with unmediated requesting and rapid courier delivery also have the same, also encounter the same enthusiasm. And it's what an odd and politically valuable thing that generations of patrons in these sorts of consortia are very aware of the nature and value of regional print collaboration. As a graduate student at the University of Chicago, I can tell you that I appreciated interlibrary loan and I was grateful for it even though it took several weeks for things to uh, arrive, but I would never have said that I love interlibrary loan. So a lot of that love for Ohio Link and similar systems is generated by the speed of requesting and delivery, a system that leads to the disadvantages of distance and therefore time. So how readily regional cooperation translates into time saved, love generated, and therefore sustainable support maintained is an interesting question that has come up several times already and will come up later today. So we were discussing it earlier, <laughs> speed equals love. That's, you know, in, in print delivery. But alternately, <clears throat> I can easily imagine a near future where the disadvantages of distance and therefore time are elided in reverse, that scholars will be able to interact with a rare, unique print item in a streaming virtual environment that will not involve either travel, shipping, or making a digital copy.
Perhaps researchers will strap on an Oculus Rift virtual reality hood, log onto Facebook, and be able to read a book while an automatic page turning and streaming camera apparatus manipulates and presents the object in real time. And then apparently, if you're wearing Oculus Rift, you vomit 20 minutes late. <laughs> Almost all the pieces of technology that would make this realistic already exist. It's not the same access, but it might be acceptable access in the same way that an ebook at 2 a.m. is better than nothing at all. So there are many more interesting discussion points already raised by the first day of the symposium, so let's get to the program. 